provide the public with as much information as possible. Last night at about 7 p.m., our officers responded to the community of Plum Run in reference to an abduction of a four-year-old girl. Thankfully, the four-year-old was located alive about two hours later near Banning Park. This afternoon, Colonel Bond will discuss the case and the facts that we know up to this point. While our detectives have been working the case through the night, we still don't have all the facts of the investigation at this early stage. County Executive Meyer will also speak regarding this case. We'll have about five minutes for questioning after the County Executive speaks, and we are streaming this live through the county's Facebook page. We'll be providing updates via our WordPress, Twitter, and Facebook. Now invite Colonel Vaughn Bond to the podium. Good afternoon. As stated earlier, last evening at approximately 7 p.m., the four-year-old victim and her friends were outside of their residence in the area of uh, 4800 Sugar Plum Court, doing what kids do, playing and having a good time. When they were approached by a white or Hispanic male who drove up in a dark colored sedan vehicle and engaged the four-year-old in small conversation. The suspect managed to walk the four-year-old to his vehicle and proceeded to force her inside of it and drive off at a high rate of speed. The victim's friends, who ranged in age from seven 11 years old did their very best to chase after the vehicle. Realizing that they could not stop the vehicle, they immediately notified an adult who in turn called 911. That 911 call triggered an intense search on behalf of not only the police department, but many concerned residents who live in that particular community. At approximately 8.45 p.m., we received a 911 call from an individual who saw the four-year-old child walking in the area of Banning Park. Realizing that this was a small child, it's dark, and that it should be accompanied by an adult, they did what we expect of an adult. They stopped, checked on the child, and immediately called 911. At that point, several of our officers, along with the Delaware State Police, Ellesmere Police Department, responded to that call where we were able to verify that the child was in, that, in fact our missing person. <clears throat> the victim was immediately transported to AI DuPont Hospital, where she underwent an examination which revealed that she was in fact sexually assaulted. I can assure the public that this incident is by far the number one priority for Newcastle County Police Department. Incidents like this don't happen often. And when they do, they strike a chord not only with Newcastle County Police Department, but surrounding agencies as well. Last night, we had the immediate assistance of the FBI, the Delaware State Police, the Newark, excuse me, the Newport Police Department, the Attorney General's Office, the Child Advocacy Center, and most importantly, the good citizens of Newcastle County. As with any case of this magnitude, we call on the public, and we need the public to come forward to assist us. We, I think we can all agree when we talk about incidents, there's nothing lower, nothing lower that a person can do 
to, to take advantage and sexually abuse and take the innocence of a four-year-old child. We are asking the public, the community, to come forward with information. We recognize that the information we have right now is very brief. We're looking for a dark colored four door sedan, possibly black with tenant windows. We're looking for a white or Hispanic male. We recognize that that's not a lot to go on. But I'm confident, and we've seen time and time again, where small details such as that have been enough to provide us with the information we need in order to solve an investigation such as this. We're asking that the communities, not only the village of Plum Park, but surrounding communities, remain vigilant, look at what the activity is in your neighborhood, report any suspicious persons, vehicles, activity to 911 immediately. The community, the residents of that community, know their community better than the police. You know who belongs there and who doesn't. You know when something looks out of place and when it doesn't. Call and report to 911 right away. Lastly, I would say that every member of Newcastle County Police Department is committed, regardless of their assignment, to solving and apprehending this heartless monster. It's the only word that I can think of, monster, who committed this act. No one has a right to violate anyone but you reach an all new low level when you want to take advantage of a child, a four year old child. We're going to do everything in our power. We're going to take any assistance that we can get to identify this person, this monster. Nothing would do me greater than to have him in handcuffs and led away in hell so that he can face the consequences of his actions. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. I'd like to invite the Honorable Matthew Meyer, County Executive. Uh, thank you, Colonel Bond, uh, JP Pfizer. Uh, and thank you to the media for coming that you obviously all play a vital role uh, in getting the word out uh, so we can catch this, this monster. Three quick things. Uh, one is I wanted to assure the public that our police agency here at Newcastle County Police, each of the neighboring police agencies, the Attorney General's Office, the FBI, numerous other groups, organizations, and agencies are working around the clock on this specific case. Second, to parents out there, to people out there living in our county. I want you to be vigilant. When your kids are playing outside, I want you to make sure that an adult is supervising, has eyes on those kids. When your neighbor's kids are outside, make sure that somebody has eyes. Your friend's kids, let's all take care of each other. This is an opportunity for us as adults to take care of each other and take care of the children in our neighborhoods. I also uh, want to tell you that uh, you should speak to your kids, uh, make sure they know if an adult who is a stranger approach them, they need to immediately, immediately come and tell an adult. Again, instruct your children that if they see an adult that they're not familiar with who approaches them immediately, immediately go and tell an adult. For adults out there, the number one weapon we have 
against monsters like this is you. It's you and all of us. If you see something strange, if you see something that in any way resembles what the colonel described, please pick up the phone, call 911. If you're not sure, call 911, let the police make the decision. All right? We need your help on this one, and I think we can catch this guy together. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'd like to invite Councilwoman Kilpatrick to the podium. Thank you. I would just like to say that at this point, there are no words to describe how angry I am that this could happen, not only in my district, but in Newcastle County, and there are no words to express the grief that I feel for the families that are involved in this, for the children that were in that neighborhood, and for the innocent that has been taken away. Thank you, Councilman. We'll now take questions. We have about five minutes for that. I ask that you raise your hand, wait to be called on, and let us know what news organization you're with. And I'll start with Brian. Brian Odom from Channel 6 in Philadelphia for, Mr. for uh, the Colonel. Colonel, Colonel, what's with the, was she found in the park or near the park? And are you continuing to search the park? If so, for what? Did she say she was in the park, sir? That's my... Well, sir, she was found, um, <clears throat> initially she was observed walking from the tree line of the park area. So yes, she was coming from the park. Did she describe, she been able to describe anything about uh, further Way the guy looked, or further uh, characteristics he might have had. I know she's only four, and that's tough. But uh, well, where you, 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 we have to keep in mind that by the time the interview was conducted, it was very early morning hours. So our initial to, uh, concentration for our line of question was to find out what happened, how she ended up in there. She was able to provide us with that information. Um, <clears throat> we have a subsequent. Uh, follow-up interview scheduled with her, and at that time, we'll get into a little bit more details. Yes, Adam Dierner with the News Journal. Can you describe the role of the, the Children's Advocacy Center uh, so far in this case and what they're going to be doing upcoming? Well, the, the CAC, um, is what we refer to it as, they're responsible. Um, they have experts who specialize in conducting interviews with young children. Um, children interviews are quite different from adults. Sometimes in your line of questioning, you have to be very careful um, how you proceed with asking questions in order to get an appropriate answer um, from that child, especially when they have been uh, subject to, to uh, a traumatizing event such as this. I suppose, have they, have the C has CAC interviewed this particular child? Yes, we did. A, they did a brief interview last night, or early this morning. Colonel, uh, Dave Kinchin, Fox 29 News. Um, is, we heard there may have been a description of a facial hair or something on this suspect. Can you comment or, or elaborate on that and any chance of any sort of surveillance images at this point being classified? As far as the facial hair goes, um, there was a report. Uh, we had several witnesses that we um, were out there. Um, and there was a report that the subject may have had hair. Uh, and then again, one person said they might not have had hair. So again, when you have a situation where you have multiple witnesses, you know, you, you tend to get, you know, various answers. And nothing in terms of color of clothing? Or no, sir, not at this point. Andrea, Fine Thompson, NBC 10. In terms of layout of that neighborhood, it seems like somebody would have had to know their way around. It seems like there's one way in, one way out. Do you believe she was targeted specifically? No, I do not. There's nothing that would lead us to believe that she was targeted. I think what we have is a monster who was riding around looking Looking for a victim. Any surveillance video, sir? Uh, sir, we're in the process right now of um, asking residents, and that's something that I think I forgot to mention, but uh, we are asking residents that have home surveillance um, equipment and businesses if they could contact us and let us know. Uh, we're in the process right now of going through. We did collect a uh, one video last night, and we're in the process right now of going through that to see whether or not it's going to yield anything of um, evidentiary value for us. But nothing hard yet, right? No, sir. Um, is there any thought or concern that this could be connected to any possible other situations in the past? I know we spoke with some neighbors who had mentioned, you know, a 
discussions of belt, you know, recently and, and possibly connecting that. Is the same kind of suspect, or are these completely separate? Well, there are uh, there are uh, some factors in this that are different from the, the first of the serial killer allegations mm -hmm. that we have. Uh, there are some factors, and some of the description varies from this. Uh, at this point here, uh, I will not say that it's not possible. Uh, however, the MO uh, is vastly different from, as well as the selection of victims is quite different from what we've seen from the serial killer allegations. Take one more question. down there around the park yesterday or anything like that, sir? No, not, not in the park yesterday, no, sir. Did she say no. she was let go after dark or before the dark, as she said? I believe, um, I, we don't know exactly. Um, she didn't give us that, that information, but I believe, uh, based on the time we found her, that more than likely it was dark when she was. Was, what you say? Sorry, in the park right now, there's a good number of police there. We're hoping to gather evidence. Uh, we're looking for uh, any evidence that may have been left behind uh, by, the, by the suspect. Uh, that's our primary focus. We're, we're looking for evidence. And she, she was released. She didn't have to escape or anything. Yeah, she was released. Did she have any? Did she have any? It was cold last. It was cold. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Did she have any? Uh, uh, Outer garments or a coat or a jacket left, or did you just leave her out there? You know, now that it was very cold last night. Just so I mean. She was, um, she was left with, um, very, very few garments, sir. I'll leave it at that. And a towel or a blanket? 